Let's run through some examples of how to use RoboCopy to copy files on Windows. So first, I've got a source folder here called C source. And in it, I've got a couple of JPEGs and MSI and then a folder of wallpapers. And you can see those down below. And my destination folder, D slash DST, that's empty. So we're gonna be copying files and folders into it. RoboCopy is designed to copy folder. So the very simplest syntax you will ever see with RoboCopy is line five. You give it a source folder, destination folder, and run it. In the output, this is what's really interesting with RoboCopy. So here at the top, we can see we get a started, we get a source, we get a destination, and then we also see the files that it's copying. And by default, since we didn't specify a filter, it uses star.star .star or all files. And then down below, we see the options line. And this, these are the default options that we that are selected when we don't specify anything. So we can see dcopy, which is for directories, and it, the da tells us to copy all the data and all the attributes of each folder. And the slash copy dat, that is telling it what to copy for the files. So d is data, a is attributes, t is timestamps. And then we also have a couple of other, other options. We have s for security, o for the owner info, and u for auditing info. And the slash r, that's the number of retries if it has an issue. And by default, it's set to a million. <laughs> that's probably a little high. Uh, so consider setting that lower. And slash W, that is how long it waits when it runs into a problem before retrying. So by default, it's set to 30. And if we scroll down, we can see the files that it copied. So you can see there are three of them. And then at the very bottom of this, we see uh, the overview of what it did. So you can see that it copied 108 megabytes and it did it very fast. And on line seven, so yes, RoboCopy is designed to copy folders, but it can also copy files. And so line seven, this is the syntax for copying a file. And literally what this is, and we'll go ahead and run it, we'll scroll up here and we can see that it's copying, it's using that image underscore 720.jpg. That is the file filter. So it's finding all files that match that filter, which of course is just gonna be one or none. But in this case, it was one. And we scroll down to the bottom and we can even see that it skipped that file because it already exists. And if we do look at the destination folder, uh, we can see that there's just those three files in it, like we saw in the output of RoboCopy. So we, we mentioned with the slash copy that there's the DAT options, you know, the data, the attribute, the timestamps. So files, there's a lot to a file besides just the data. And you may already be aware of this, but it's a good, it's a good thing to go over. So for instance, we can see all the timestamps on a file by using get item in PowerShell and down at the bottom, the attributes. So by default, this is an archive since it's a JPG, uh, but it could also be hidden, for example. And we get some other metadata about this file. And we can also look at the ACL. I'm excluding the SDDL just because I don't want my, my SIDs showing here. But if we run line 13, you know, we, we, we can look at the the ACLs themselves. And the ACL, of course, has a bunch of ACEs, so the access control entries or rules. We're not gonna get into all of those, but those can be copied with RoboCopy when you use a slash copy colon S. And here at line 17. So before diving into any examples of RoboCopy, most important flag slash L. That does a what if, meaning that it will display what it would copy if you excluded the slash L flag. So this is similar to the PowerShell's what if, if you're familiar with that, we'll run line 17 here. And you can see, if we scroll up, that it tells me all the files that it would copy. So you can see a bunch of new files here, and then even a new directory. And if we scroll back down to the bottom of this, this is where we can see the summary that it will skip some because they already exist. So the L flag, very useful. Use it all the time, seriously. In this case, it's a slash MIR that mirrors one directory to another. So copying all the files and removing the ones that don't exist. Now we'll get to another example here in a little bit. And if we want to include subfolders in their files, we use a slash E option. And then the slash copy all, this parameter is the equivalent of saying slash copy colon D-A-T-S-O-U. <laughs> so uh, the data, attributes, timestamps, security, owner and auditing information. So that's just comp copying all of it because that's a lot easier to remember. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see here that there, some of them were skipped because they already exist, but there were a lot that were copied. When we can scroll up here, we can see there's a bunch of a new directory and a bunch of new files. Great, so that, that did what we expected. I'm just going to clear that. And the slash MOV, the slash MOV is a cool one 
uh, because this will m copy the files and then delete the source or do what is called a move, right? So slash MOV without an E will only move the files in the d source directory, not any subfolders. So if we run this and we scroll up and look at the output, you can see that it created three new files, no new folder, no subfolders, nothing. So if you do want to copy all of those, line 35, we add the E to move. And we scroll up and we can see that now we got all those other folders. And it's marked the three files that were already copied as extra, meaning that it's not going to do anything with them. And then it just got a command here to restore the our source directory. So another thing that Robocopy is good at is copying stuff over networks. And one of the really neat features is a slash Z parameter. This makes it so that it can resume a file after it's been partially copied. So this is really, really useful for big files, not, not for small files. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to simulate a network disruption. So I'm going to start copying this and then disable my network connection. So there you can see we got to 28% on that 100 meg file. We have network error. And so what I'm going to do is re-enable the network. So it's going to start working again and wait for that 30 seconds to be up. And if you want this to take less than 30 seconds, that's where using a, a smaller value for slash W comes into play. But there you can see we're going now to 100%, the file copied, no errors, beautiful, I love it. So we, we mentioned earlier you can use filters with files, and we use it with just a file name as a filter. But you can also use uh, the asterisk, so we can say all JPG files here on line 47, and we can look and see that we had two files that were copied, but none of the subfolders, hmm. So that's because we omitted the slash E option. So if we go to line 48 here, go ahead and run that. And this time we got some additional options, but you'll notice that the filter I use mountain with a star on either side. So it's getting all files with mountain in them. And there's three of them. And we can also combine filters. So here on line 49, and it's important to know that it's gonna say, um, it's, it combines these filters with an or. So it's gonna be .jpg or mountain in them. So if we run this, it's actually gonna get, I think all of the files except for the MSI. So you can see these extra ones here because they are JPEGs. So you're gonna clean it up. And another really useful thing with Robocopy, when you wanna just copy files that are of a specific age or newer or older, we have the slash max age and slash min age parameters. So slash max age says that I'm gonna exclude copying files if they are older than this many days ago or this date. So on line 59, I'm saying older than this many days ago. And if I run this, you can see that I'm skipping all of them because none of them are older than that many, than five days ago. Or sorry, none of them are newer than five days ago. And line 60, this is, this is the notation for sp specifying a certain date. So this is saying that I wanna copy all files as long as they are older than this date. So the min age is before the first day of the first month of 2022. So I run line 60, you notice that I only skipped a couple of files, or one file, actually. So most of those files were pretty old. And I'm just gonna go ahead and reset the folders. And the last option that we're gonna cover here is some of the overwrite options with Robocopy. So we have the slash XO or slash XN. And no slash O is not hugs and kisses, but on line 70 slash XO, that's gonna say we don't wanna overwrite files if the destination file is newer than the source file. So that's gonna be a pretty common one when doing syncing. And if we run it, uh, you notice that it only skipped one directory, but that's because it, was, it wasn't included. I didn't use the slash E flag I copied all the files. And slash N says don't overwrite if the destination file is older. So if you wanna keep the older file in the destination, you wanna use slash XN. Now I run this, it's actually gonna skip all of them because they have the same date timestamp. So that's how you can get started using Robocopy on Windows. Now, thanks for watching.